everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is another video in the minimalism series. I asked you guys if you wanted to hear my sort of story, kind of evolution of style, how I came to dress and decorate and declutter the way that I do. Uh, so that's why I'm making this video. I'm not sure what on earth my hair is doing today, so we're just gonna have to live with this. Um, but if you are new to my channel, I do have a whole playlist called the Minimalism Series. It's got videos on how to declutter your home, and it's got like a 60 day minimalism challenge in it and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe if you are new here as well. And to everyone who's been watching this series for a while now, hello and welcome back. This video is pretty informal, I'm just going to sit and talk, but um, I've decided just to break it up a little bit. I've gone back through the history of my Instagram, mainly because I don't have the raw photos anymore. I've just had to steal them off my own Instagram and I'll just be popping them on the side here. Mostly photos of my apartment because I feel like that's a good way to gauge where I was at with my minimalism um, in certain stages of my life. And you can see like the amount of possessions that reduce and like the clutter and all of that sort of thing. The furthest that I could find back was from like 2012 I think so there's a couple of images from all the way back then and one last thing before I jump into it if you do enjoy the video I would appreciate it so much and it does help me if you give the video a thumbs up okay so back in the day back when I lived at home with my mom I had a lot of stuff and I mean I was working when I was living at home still so I had all this like disposable income and for me it was fun to go out with my friends and go shopping or go online shopping that sort of thing like that's what I spent my free time doing this was probably like five years ago so when I was like 19 sort of age um, because that's when I was going out a lot as well like I had some pretty unhealthy habits I, I was working as a photographer too so I don't know just being around like fashion photography all the time you just want like the latest clothes and you want to look cool and you want to keep up that image now when I say I used to own a lot of clothes I mean I used to own a lot of clothes most of them were black though, <laughs> so I had a whole clothes rack full of clothes, I think I had two clothes racks full of clothes, I'll try and like pop some images up, and then I had a whole built-in cupboard into my room as well, and that was stuffed, like I'd keep my room looking neat most of the time, but my cupboard was bursting, I'd have to like lean on it and jam it shut, that's how much stuff was in there, and I had like over a hundred pairs of shoes, I couldn't even wear all of them, so I don't know why I owned that many and I used to love buying ridiculous shoes as well like I'm talking like big crazy heels that I don't know I couldn't even wear them they just looked amazing and to me it was like they looked cool it was almost like an artwork but it's so inappropriate and I couldn't wear it I had this issue from when I was like probably 14 until I was probably 20 where I didn't like people seeing me in the same outfit twice and I've mentioned this in a previous video actually but I don't know how I just managed to remember what I wore all the time and so I would try and make a different outfit even if it was one thing that was changing I was trying to make the outfit not exactly the same and I did that for years I think a lot of that stems back from when I was in school like younger age I had like the mousy brown hair I was like the shy quiet boring girl apparently uh, I was just weird and I just had to hide my weirdness in school because you can't be weird in school um, or at least that's how it feels anyway but definitely like just embrace being strange, doesn't matter. Now back to just, just jumping forward again to when I was like 19, 18, 19, I was spending a lot of my money on clothes and shoes and that sort of thing because that's what I thought made me happy at the time. I definitely wasn't good at saving tons of money because of it, like I saved up a bulk of money before I moved out of home but at that age I just wasn't saving anything. Now when I used to buy these clothes, because I was buying so many clothes all the time and I just wanted to quickly have a different outfit, different outfit all the time, couldn't even go out in the same thing, I was buying a lot of cheaper items. And I'd see it in a shop or online and I'd think, oh my god, this looks amazing, and then I'd get it and the quality was never that great. Now I definitely like to put a bit more money into items. I like to look for things that I know are going to last longer. So for example, I have a pair of Tory Burch boots. I bought them over a year ago and they don't even look like I've worn them and I wear them at least twice a week. Whereas when I was buying clothes and shoes back then, they just start to fall apart and you try and like fix things up because I've always been handy with that sort of stuff and just trying to fix things up a little bit and it's just never the same, like the fabric and the quality is just not there for you to be able to hold on to it for a long time. And the same sort of thing went for my bedroom because obviously I just had a bedroom at this stage and everything was white, like I've always loved uh, that. <sighs> I can't say monochromatic, I guess it's even grayscale because monochromatic just means one color, but it's black, white, and gray, and I've always kind of gone for. I always had just black clothes and white interior, like everything was white and glass and maybe a little bit of silver. And then I had like the plants popping through every now and again and that sort of thing. Like I've always loved 
that kind of style. But back then there was a lot of stuff. I thought, oh, I've got a clear surface here. I have to put some kind of something on it for attention, whether it's like a big candle and some other stuff or just little decorative pieces. I really loved having uh, lots of things to look at. But back then I had this whole mentality of what if I need it? Or I can't get rid of this because what if I want to wear it later and I don't know. Then I decided to move out with a friend and I moved into a two bedroom apartment. She obviously had one room and I had the other room, but the apartment had next to no storage. Like the lounge room was really, really small. And then there was our bedrooms and then just like a kitchen and a bathroom. And it was tiny, but it was in awesome location. Because there was no storage, I had to buy a clothes rack and I had to have all of my clothes on the clothes rack. And so what I used to do for the clothes that I wasn't wearing in that season, I did a major cull before I moved there by the way like I got rid of so many of my decorative items I got rid of so many clothes and I figured one of the reasons I was buying so many clothes was to make variation in my outfit so what I did is I got rid of a lot of the stuff that didn't fit anymore and then I put in some white and some gray so anyway <laughs> uh, new apartment uh, I had my clothes just hanging on a rack and then the clothes for example if it was summer I had my summer clothes up and then my winter clothes I put in one of those space bags and I'd suck it right down so it's really really flat and just shove that under the pallet bed because things like a coat in where I live you don't need heavy coats or anything like that it's pretty temperate all year round like in summer people are generally in like shorts and singlets because it does get really really hot here so about 40 degrees Celsius plus, like up to 45 in summer sometimes. Um, in winter though, like our winter is about 20 degrees Celsius, so it's not really that bad. So it's mostly for ease of moving that I started culling a lot of those things and I kept the stuff that I liked the look of and that made me feel happy to look at. So I didn't have too much because I was just taking up one bedroom and then it was my furniture in the lounge room as well, like a dining table, a couch, that sort of thing. Didn't own TVs or anything like that. As I was in that new place, I had a more steady income job because I wasn't doing the photography so much anymore, so I had like a normal job. And because that income was steady and I knew it would be there all the time, I started investing a lot more into like one item of clothing or like a better brand of makeup, things like that. Because I find, I don't know if it's just me as a person or what, but I get very bored of things. It's why I move my apartment around a lot. It's why my hair is different all the time. Just little things like that. I just get tired and so I like to change them because to me it makes everything feel fresh again. Please tell me some of you are like that. There is no way that I can be the only one. <laughs> now even though I was buying more quality items because I was still living in that smaller apartment, I wanted as much free space as I could have. So that to me meant not having too much junk lying around and I've never really been a sentimental person like I've never hung on to photographs or trinkets or knickknacks whatever you want to call it that's never been me. Then at this point in my life was when I started seeing Bo and my roommate at the time and Bo and I we all moved into a much bigger apartment which was in like a better neighborhood to live in and this place was huge like I'm talking the ceiling was like six or seven meters from the floor. And uh, it was like four bedrooms and like a couple bathrooms, all that sort of thing. It was just a big apartment. I was living in this apartment when I started my YouTube channel and I started filming that minimalism series. I still owned a fair amount of stuff, but this was where I started culling it down a bit more. It's obviously a lot more refined now than it was then. Like I still get people watching my old like culling your makeup video and I got rid of like half my makeup in that video. And then people were still like, you still own so much makeup, blah, blah, blah. But for me, getting rid of half of it in one go was a huge step. And that's where I also filmed like culling my wardrobe and all of that sort of thing. I think living there is where I really got my head around my style, like I really started to understand it. Now with the space I'm living in now, it is another big apartment, like I definitely took the steps to culling and reducing a lot of what I own when I was living in smaller places because you need as much space as you can get. Um, I get a lot of people questioning me like, oh if you're a minimalist, why do you live in such a big apartment, blah blah blah. I live from I, obviously I live here, um, I do all my study here, I do all my filming here, my editing, my work, like actually sitting at the computer and working for the Eat, Run, Lift stuff. Pretty much most of my life is based at home. If you've been following me for a while, like the last apartment, I, it sounds like I move a lot. I think it's just common here and I get unhappy in spaces because they cramp me in. Like the last place I was living in was quite small, it was just like a two bedroom place. One bedroom was taken up with Bro's office, the other bedroom was our bedroom and I don't like to work in a bedroom, I find I can't sleep in there if I do work in there, so I have to keep those things completely separate. Um, so I was pretty much just in my lounge room all day, all the time, 
working, studying, everything, and I was going crazy. <laughs> so I'm living in a bigger place now because I do have that freedom. Like I've got my bedroom, then I've got an upstairs area, I've got the lounge room, I've got my office. Like I can separate those spaces and feel at ease being at home. And over the last four years, I definitely think I found what's important to me. So for example, I train a lot now. So clothing is not so important to me as long as I have enough gym gear to get me through a week. And then I have maybe like one or two casual outfits I don't really need more than that. I find myself wearing the same thing all the time. And then just like a couple of outfits to wear to events because I do get invited to a lot of those sort of things. So I need to make sure that I have nice clothes for that. So as long as I have those basic outfits, I'm set. If you'd like me to do, I don't think I've done a proper wardrobe tour before with like trials and that sort of stuff. So if you'd like me to do a wardrobe tour, give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, something like that, just let me know. And one thing that is obviously crucial to me working and doing what I love is I guess like technology and camera stuff so I've got to have like my computer I have a lot of camera gear like a lot <laughs> I've got you know my tripod there my camera there my microphone there I've got three lights around me right now I've got a backdrop stand like right in front of me here that I can see I've got two other lights set up over there they're not on or anything but they're just there it's a lot of gear that I have um, because I find that I need that stuff to be able to set up and film and do all these creative things that I want to do like I still love taking photos and so every now and again I do product photography for brands or I try and take some cool stuff on my Instagram you know that's like my personal little gallery I guess some things that I've discovered that are not important to me at all is owning lots and lots of clothes and having knickknacks and lots of decorative decorative <laughs> pieces around the house so for me um, my decorations now are usually plants just because I find that they are a bit more visually pleasing to the eye they help break up all the black and white that I have because there is a lot of black and white like if you see my apartment tour you'll know so I guess I want to own less junk and a few nice like very nice items i've also personally learned a lot better how to save my money i think there's nothing wrong with wanting money like i want to have money to be able to have the freedom to travel and i want to be able to put money back into my business and i want to be able to spend a bit of money on creating stuff like if i didn't have my camera gear i wouldn't be able to be as creative because the camera doesn't make the photo you've got to have it in your head of course but then to have the right technology around you to help you create that it's pretty integral so even when i was working full-time i was studying as well i was studying and working both full-time i'm only really studying part-time now because i've got eat run lift running i'm trying to get another business up and underway doing my youtube we're about to start the eat run lift youtube we've been filming like a backlog of videos for that um, you know, study, trying to have some free time. So for me, it's been very important to know how to take pockets of time for myself. Um, I was saying on Twitter the other day that I haven't had a day off, like a full day off in three months. So for me to be able to schedule my day so that I can at least maybe get like half an hour or an hour where I can just chill out, that's pretty important to me. I find that I don't need a whole day to be able to relax and unwind. I just need that small amount of time and then I can reset and recharge. Now I thought I would just include eight of my little tips, I guess you call it, for getting started on your own personal journey with minimalism. Where, whether that means that you end up culling so well and you can perfectly define what you need to the point where you can live out of like backpack and you can just go traveling like that, that'd be amazing. Or whether you're more like me and you want a very carefully curated selection of things, or maybe it just means that you're decluttering a little bit. My first step is a very, very easy one and it's just to start. You don't have to go and turn your whole life upside down, but you can go and start with an area. So maybe for you, you want to have more free time. So it's about optimizing your schedule and or actually getting a schedule if you don't have one. Um, starting with some lists of things to do and how you can optimize your day. Or maybe for you, you own a lot of stuff and it's just about figuring out, maybe going into one room, where can you start culling? What do you need? What don't you need? What's important and what's not? My second tip is to download my 60 day minimalism challenge. I'll provide a link to that in the description box for you guys. It's free, it doesn't cost anything. Like I just made it so that you guys can do it. And I've made a hashtag as well, which is hashtag 60 days to minimal. I probably don't promote that enough. But anyway, there's a few posts on that tag and you can reach me through that tag on Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, if I see it, I will come and check out your posts. My third tip is to assess what's important in your life. So for me, that personal journey involved me going, well, I really wanna create. I really don't care if I'm wearing the same thing all the time now, I just want to be able to have that freedom to make things because that's what really, really makes me happy. 
My fourth tip is to actually learn to compromise because if you're living with someone else, this is a really, really important step. They might not be interested in this at all. They still might want to earn a lot of stuff. It's not for everybody. Five is to set standards for your purchases. Uh, for me personally, like for example, clothing items, I want to make sure they're good enough quality that they will last a long time. Um, I also try to look after things a little bit better as well. And unless it's something like a cleaning supply or something like that where you can't be too fussy, I normally have a few gatekeepers of bringing things into my home. So do they match like the color theme that I have? Do they match my style? And is it actually necessary? My sixth tip is to have a maybe pile or I don't know, sometimes I call it like a purgatory zone. So these could be items of clothing that you have that you're not sure if you want to get rid of. Like I went through this when I lost a fair amount of weight and I was like, I hope I'm not gonna be at that weight again, but I don't know. So I culled my wardrobe and I put them all in one of those vacuum bags. Again, I love those things, they're so handy. Uh, put them in a vacuum bag, shoved them at the top of my cupboard, didn't touch them for six months, so donated them to charity. Um, another way that I like to incorporate this tip is if you are online shopping or something like that, uh, or even real life, take a photo of the item and if you still remember it in like 30 days, then go back and get it. Or if you're online, bookmark it and I like to wait 30 to 60 days before I purchase something online. Just make sure it's something that you really, really need. If you find yourself constantly coming back to it, then maybe it is something that you truly want or you need incorporated into your life. My seventh tip is to find your own style because it will make it very easy to decide what you do and don't need. And my eighth piece of advice is that you are enough. You don't need to buy things to feel whole. It doesn't matter if you have a huge wardrobe, tons of shoes, like the newest makeup, all that kind of thing. At the end of the day, if you're still a rude person or an unhappy person, you're still going to be that person. I know that purchasing a lot of stuff can make it seem like you're filling a void, but that's temporary. So I think it's important to spend a lot of time with yourself and figure out who you are as a person. What do you really enjoy? What makes you happy? and how can you spend more time doing what you love. If you have more videos you want to see as part of the minimalism series, don't forget to leave me a comment below. And if you are new, hit subscribe and I'll catch all of you guys in my next video. Bye!